my son got killed last year, the 25th of December, and I want a traffic light. <laughs> Kill last year, the 25th of December, and I want a traffic light. <laughs> it wasn't that way, kid. Yeah. Uh, can I say something? Well, just a little while ago, this little boy almost got run over. And the cop didn't, the only thing, a lady shouted out, you know, that's why we need a stoplight. Instead of saying yes, he says, no, you don't need a stoplight. You need mothers out here to watch their kids go across the street. As old as I am, you need me to tell me I'm going to get my mother out here to watch me go across the street. That's full of stuff. What do you want? Stop it! What do you want? Stop it! Deliberately blocking traffic means exposure, means openly risking arrest. People were cautious. They found no way to confront the police. This time the police were cautious. Instead of clearing people out of the streets, they sent for the precinct captain. Now, I can't promise you a traffic light, but I don't have the right to do that. But we have been in conversation with the deputy mayor, that's Paul Riley. Now, he has given me the go-ahead to promise you people that within 48 hours, there will be stop signs put at this location. The point is this, that the stop signs will be put up pending the survey to be made with regard to the traffic and if, if traffic lights are needed. Stop signs went up within 48 hours, but after a month of no word about a traffic light, people decided to demonstrate again. This time a group of city officials showed up, including the director of police and the human rights commissioner. Uh, director's office and Inspector right. Melch is the person who's involved right. in the director's office. And that's the man. And they have been, now the director tells me, I didn't know until just now. He tells me a recommendation has been made to Trent for life. That's, that's right. up to Trent to make the decision. Now it's up to the state now to do something about these uh, stop signs, too. Keep them all paid going down there to talk to the city. All they got to do, we left it so convenient for them that all they had to do was pick up a telephone, dial a number, and say, we are still working on it, Paul. We are trying to get you right, or we're not going to get you right. You're not going to right, tell Tom, us something. Mr. Tom, you, you, you. They really do need a light, Dad. Now, our light, the light for Badge and Avon, has been approved, and it's only a matter now of uh, getting the money from the city, and that shouldn't be too big a problem. We've had an invitation to be at the council meeting when it comes up before the council for approval. The mayor and his staff were persuasive. Most of the people left the meeting convinced that the traffic light was a reality. Only a matter of time. First of all, you have to go through bureaucratic procedures in order to get certain things that you want. Uh, for example, when you want a traffic light in the city of Newark or any other city or municipality in New Jersey, you, you your own department or your own city must make a survey. And there are certain standards that must be um, uh, met with in order to uh, justify a light. And after you do meet these standards, you uh, 
People were confused. The mayor had said that the light was justified, that it had already been approved. Now the city was saying that it had no power to get a traffic light, that it was up to the state. The city's conflicting stories continued. Nobody could get a straight answer. Without knowing who had the real power to get a traffic light, people were unclear about what more they could do. They themselves send their own representative to make a survey. And if then they feel that it's justifiable, they will give you their approval. And that's when you get your light. After 10 months, there is still no traffic light on the corner. As far as anyone knows, the city does not intend to install one. Petitions, street demonstrations, even a promise from the mayor were clearly not enough. The city had absorbed all activity by agreeing to install a light and then claiming it had no power to do so. Organizers draw out the anger and frustration people feel about conditions in the neighborhood. They also draw out people's doubt and despair about the possibilities for change. People's experience indicates that nothing changes and that the power which controls the neighborhood is immune to anything they could do. It's time the poor man start doing something for himself. In Irvington, if it's snow today and you go out there tomorrow, it don't be no snow on the ground. There's no right. snow on the ground. It sweeps it. It sweeps it. That's right. If, if the snow here, snow lay here on this street for two, three weeks at a time, if it months. doesn't melt, it'll lay here. It's 63, 61. It lays here for a whole three months until I'm afraid of him coming yeah, but, but what happened to the tax money? Right. Went in their pocket. I've been wagging on yeah, some the tax money went in somebody's pocket. Went in the power structure pocket. I mean, unemployment is the same That's way. Right. I mean, if you don't loan somebody, or if you ain't up there, you, 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 you can't get a decent job. They offer a man, they offer me, I was drawing 40, 40, $42 a week unemployment. They wanted me to work for $1.15 an hour. Right. So what the hell I get home with? You work, can you be working with about $2 a week? Right. I mean, it's it just, it just, you got the wrong people upstairs running it for us. It's time that they know that they can be defeated, and it's time we get out and beat them. And this is what's going to change it. When you we get jobs, money, when we can have money to support our children, when we have the money to support our own selves and have homes like everybody else has, we don't have to live in this, then. Yeah, and win, and all that stuff. If, if, well. if we can get everyone to do this. If, how, if, this is a big word. You know what I'm saying? When I go downtown and try to give me a job, and I go down to this unemployment yeah. office, you know what I'm saying? I tell these people, I said, look here, I want a job. I said, I'm not working. I have four children. You know what they tell me? Well, you fill out this little application. I fill it out. You know what I'm saying? Now they tell me, what are you capable for? I tell them, well, I'm capable for mostly anything. You know what I'm saying? Because I know I have to say this. Why? Because I know I can't go anywhere and get me a job. See? Because I know the reason. You understand? I'm not committing myself by saying well, what is the reason, what ain't the reason, but I'm just going to say I know the reason. Now, what are you doing to me? They say, well, all right, well, you come back tomorrow, and then maybe Meta. we might have something for you. You understand? Yeah, no. Now, I come back tomorrow. They tell me to come back next day. Finally, finally. You know what I'll be out there doing? Huh? I'll be out there down, down the market right here, trying to load trucks, trying to take care of my four children. You understand? And my wife. And this is the things that I'd be doing. But listen, what about this here? You get a, you go to court, you get a subpoena to move, right? They, they tell you to move. Okay. Now you're supposed to move, but where you gonna move to? Yet and still, they, you, they got a court order to put you out. And still, your furniture, you gonna go? when your furniture and everything is put on the street and your children are put on the street, then what are you gonna do? You tell you me. Do you tell well, me. Uh, and then they have a law against, don't do this, don't do that. Me and my don't, landlord, don't, don't me and my landlord would be fighting, fighting, Fighting to death. They say don't take nothing, right? Before he saw my kids. Is this the point? Is this the the point? They say don't do not take. But still and all, you have to have your children out here starving with nothing to eat, and you can't even get a job. Now you just tell me. I mean, what's right? Well, see, we know it's not right. They know it's not right. They know it's not right. But they've been doing that so long, and nobody. I mean, that's what people stop. If people get together and try to try to change that, then it could probably could be changed. If everybody get together, we can fight it. But as long as everybody walk on by and don't speak up and don't try to look out for 
not just themselves, for everybody, the majority, then we would all have a little more than we got right now. Yeah, the better advantage right. to it. Amen. Right. When organizers draw out the anger and frustration people feel about conditions in the neighborhood, they also draw out people's doubt and despair about the possibilities for change. People's experience indicates that nothing changes and that the power which controls the neighborhood is immune to anything they could do. So organizers try to get people to come to neighborhood meetings where common problems can be discussed, where people's anger can begin to work. I'm I've been mad, but there's nothing I can do about it in the vision. The rich man control Nook. And it's, Nook is 52% Negro. 52% Negro. You understand what I'm saying? Now it's time that we do something. Everybody wants to stand around and get on the corner and say, well, let's, let's do something about what's happening to us. Why don't you go back to Africa, Asia, where you're from? We ain't from Africa, Asia. He's from somewhere, too. Where he go back? We're right here. We're going to stay here. We're going to build our place here. And we got to build on the foundation, and we're going to do it. Now, who disagree with it? Now let's get a big hand for me. <laughs> Organizing is something other than just, you know, saying the word. It's people getting out into the street and getting in, sitting in people's kitchens and living rooms or in the bedroom, wherever the people are, and talking to them. The question is, what do you want to change? What do you want to change? What is there about this neighborhood that you want to change and that you think you can if we get enough people together? Gaskins and Mr. and Mrs. Solomon each pay more than $100 a month rent. But their apartments are barely livable because the landlord refuses to make basic repairs. NCUP's constant complaints to housing officials and housing courts have proved useless. The building continues to deteriorate. Officials downtown that are there and are not doing anything and trying to hold up the progress of what is trying to be done, these things should be exposed. A few days later, Mrs. Gaskins, Carol, and Mr. Solomon went downtown to ask for help from the Human Rights Commission. They were skeptical because they had been downtown too many times before without getting results. No one had found a way to get results. Direct pressure doesn't work. Rent strikes, which everybody talks about, don't work because a tenant has no protection under New Jersey law. When a tenant refuses to pay rent, the landlord simply evicts him. Over three months now, I've been uh, after him, not facing him, and then Did you file an official complaint, or did you just go up and, you know, I mean, uh, did you file an official complaint with the inspection department? Carol, yeah, I appreciate you making that right. They left the commissioner's office somewhat hopeful. He had promised to cooperate and had guaranteed an inspection of their building. Three days later, housing officials came, made an inspection, and sent the landlord a copy of their report. Somehow the landlord found out which tenants had been responsible for the inspection. A week later, Mrs. Gaskins got a letter of eviction. Put locks on the front doors, which I had never had any locks since I was there. And a big hole still in the, in the floor, uh, just as you go in the front door, because I'm still going back down there and report that water still leaking downstairs in my bathroom. Uh, After begging him and telling him all about the things got to be did in the house, and he run that my hundred and fifteen dollars a month every every month. And uh then cause I pressed him to get some of the things did in the place, he he give me a victim no, just that's sick of it for him being so stupid. <laughs> oh me. Fourteen families. And I even are added up the monies that he gets off of this one particular building in one year. And I would just like to point out that it's not even fit for a pig to live in studio. <laughs> I would like to just suggest, but 
that we work from this one annual because he is the one landlord that really deserves it. Let's just try to work on the families that live in that building where Emma now resides and have that rent strike now where she lives. If he so he tries to evict her, because I know the steps are falling down, the doors is knocked out, and that house had deteriorated long before Emma moved in. It's not that she is a filthy woman, because her apartment is much better than mine. <laughs> but, so if we can get this rent strike going from her building, 14 families hold out that rent for the month of January. If Emma moves out, good. And we got it. Just evict the whole building. <laughs> The PAG voted to support Mrs. Gaskins and decided to picket the landlord's house. The picketing was symbolic and everybody knew it. Nobody expected the landlord to withdraw the eviction. The talk about rent strikes was also symbolic. Even if all the tenants in the building had withheld their rent, the landlord could easily have evicted them and found new tenants. Without effective means of forcing landlords to repair, all action becomes symbolic. Landlords remain free to charge exorbitant rents and neglect their buildings. Many organizers feel that if NCUP could find a way to change housing conditions, it could build a massive movement in the neighborhood. But nobody knows how. No one has the answer. So Mrs. Gaskins moved out rather than be evicted. But her building continues to deteriorate. The problem remains. I come burdened with enormous prejudices against politics. My whole life has been spent trying to figure out, I mean, how stinking the political system is. And I don't really understand how all of a sudden we're going to step in and change it. This is not going to be an easy task, because that man sitting down at the Hall of Records he has the power where they control the courthouses, they control the institutions, the prisons, the highways, all of our county hospitals. All this power they have, and they don't intend to let us take it away from them. But we got that one thing that can take it away from them, and that's that vote. This is a fight against police brutality. Mm -hmm. the same thing, huh? A fight against job discrimination. Yeah. A fight against half-day school safety. Slum landlords. And he me how. And we are trying to bring rent control back to the city of New. There are people living in cold water flats. Yeah, paying $25, $30 a week. It shouldn't happen. But why does it happen? Because we don't have rent control here. Have they had uh, our people in there before? Sure, sure. They have been in there? Sure. Have, sure. in there. have they done anything? They haven't done anything, no. Because so why do we think that these come in there with you? Because we are not under the, no forces. You know what kind of people is going in now, you know what I mean? Do you have it's, any ideas how? It's people that has lived under these conditions and, and I am one of them. Has no, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is we've had our people in there before and they haven't been able to, to, uh, to do this. Right? Sure, these before. people that was in before. Now she said, now she's part of this. I want to know if she has new ideas that's better than the old ones, you know, that they had the before. Under, the ones that was under before were under the power machine, the structure of the and power. And we are not. And they are, you are not. not. No. We're, no, we're not on no power machine. What power machine was that? The different kind. City Hall. Oh, this, this is the different. This is all different. 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 different political parties. That's right. If you know this what, what you, the third if party. You know, if you know what the Democratic Party is, you know that the boss is Dennis Carey. This I mean, I, I understand politics, period. This is why I was asking her there's as an individual. Two, there's, yeah. two. there's always that Republican upper guy that, 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 that is, governs your way of thinking, period. Oh, a third party. That's right. right. Yeah, this, this is a third party. party. No Democrat, no Republican party. Oh, yeah? And you want to be free, vote line D. That's line D. November 2nd, which is tomorrow. It will only take a few minutes, so let's get out and vote for the United Freedom Chicken. Line D, the United Freedom Ticket. During the last weeks of the campaign, many organizers were uneasy. The sound trucks, the leaflets, the canvassers had all gone out, but there was little feedback. Nobody was sure about how effectively the Freedom Ticket had gotten through to people. Here comes this group, late, calling themselves the United Freedom Ticket, which no one has ever heard of. And 
It says it's running on a third party, which very few people ever heard of. It says it's not really running to win, it's running to get enough votes to defeat the Democrats or scare the Democrats. You got the great mass of Negroes stuck in the South Ward and the Central Ward. And the whole country hangs together on the fact that these people have been brainwashed to either be afraid to vote, or if they do vote, they vote for the Democratic Party. Line A all the way. Line A all the way. The Democratic Party is here to stay. The Democratic Party among Negroes has the highest image. And this is what these fractional groups fight. See, more or less than fighting the local Democratic Party, they will be fighting the national image of the Democratic Party. And, uh, uh, I'm a Democrat by choice, and that was a choice that I made, and I'm not going to tell you the Democratic Party is without fault, but certainly most of the gains that have been made by uh, minority groups, uh, working class people, has been made within the Democratic Party. For two years, NCUP organizers have worked these neighborhoods, bringing people together around a variety of needs. NCUP's continuing activity to fulfill those needs has created a constant pressure for change in the neighborhood. But in spite of all NCUP's activity and all the people NCUP has organized, little concrete change has resulted. It may be that NCUP's methods are wrong, that the change they want is possible through different means. But what if the question of method is irrelevant because the kind of change NCUP wants is impossible to achieve within this society? What then should NCUP and all the people it organizes do.